Please welcome the players onto court for our opening match. From England, Rachel Chadwick and her opponent and compatriot seeded 5-8 for this year's AJ Bell British National Championships Welcome to the British National Squash Championships 2020, sponsored by AJ Bell here at Nottingham University. We have the first match of the day, Northwest rivals Rachel Chadwick against Julianne Cortese. In quite a England heavy day, there's only a couple of uh, foreigners. <laughs> you see Alan Klein from Scotland and Joel Macon from Wales. But the first match up, Chadwick and Cortese, then we have Declan James and Pat Rooney, that should be a, an interesting match, Sarah Jane Perry and Kira Marshall, then James Wilstrop, the defending champion against Charlie Lee then there'll be a, a short break and then Jasmine Hutton against Alice Green, both uh, quite young, young and up and coming players, Alan Klein of Scotland will be taking on Nick Wall followed by Alison Waters and Lily Taylor and then the last match on, number one C, Joel Makin of Wales against promising youngster Sam Todd. Well, I'm Simon Park, and joining me for this first match and the next three matches after this is Lewis Walters. How you doing, Lewis? Hi, Simon. How you doing? Great to see you. It's been a while. I know, yeah. It has. I've not been in the commentary box for a long time, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and how are things with you? You're, you're, you're based back in Nottingham these days. I know you were in, uh, in the States for quite a long time. Yeah, I was in the States for five years, actually, at, at Yale University. Um, I've actually been back in Nottingham now, so I actually work here at Nottingham University. Um, been here for the last three years, coached the, the teams here with Richard O'Connor and Mark Fuller. Wow. Yeah, it's, um, it's a great setup here, isn't it? And uh, fantastic for the students to be able to see... Uh, the best squash in, in the UK and some of the best squash in the world. Actually, some ri really highly ranked players, both the men's and the women's draws. Yeah, they, um, they're really good at Nottingham Uni with holding the events here. I mean, we had the European individuals last year, 
Um, so that was great, great for the students, great for Nottingham as well to get such a big event um, based back in Nottingham. There hasn't been any many big ones for a while. Obviously, back in the day, we had the Brit Br British Open here. Um, that was a long time ago, wasn't it? It's a very long time ago. You were you were still in nappies, weren't you, when that was going <laughs> on? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> probably was actually. Just about. It was at the. Um, was it the concert hall in, in Yeah, so they had it at Albert Hall, didn't they? They actually yeah. had it in the university one year. Yeah, uh, I think that was the first year that Mick Matthew won the British Open. It was. I actually remember that. He played yeah. uh, Lincoln in the final. That's, that's correct. Good yeah. memory. Yeah. Well, back to these two. Julianne Cortese is the favourite in this match. She's currently ranked 32 in the world in the PSA rankings. Chadwick is uh, in the 50s in the world. But as I say, these two know each other really well. Chadwick from uh, from Chester. Julianne Corte Cortese from Manchester. Any thoughts on this match, Lou? To be honest with you, Simon, I don't know these two players that well. I've obviously seen them occasionally, um, but I haven't, I haven't watched them play for a long time. I think probably a similar age to me, maybe a little bit younger, so I watched them play in juniors, but I haven't seen them play recently, so this is um, going to be new for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I saw quite a bit of um, Chadwick when she got to the final of, of Nantes a few years back, which was um, a really good result for her. Um, but only a couple of times since then. Julianne C Cortis, as I say, 32 in the world. She likes to attack, as you can see, from these first few rallies, skillful player. Yeah, and I think the glass court's going to suit that, isn't it? I mean, yeah. Obviously, Chadwick's pretty tall and and long limbs. I think playing on the glass court for someone like that is is tough, isn't it? Unless you're unless you're accurate and you can control the middle. If you've got someone sort of with a smaller frame like um, Cortese, who's chopping the ball in and moving you around, then it can be pretty awkward. Yeah, definitely. She does have a she does play well actually on uh, glass courts, Cortese, which is handy when you're a professional squash player. <laughs> <laughs> it is, yeah. <laughs> but she takes the ball nice and early, hits it crisply, and she looks like she's in a hurry here, taking no prisoners. start here 6-1 yeah Chadwick uh, 54 in the world rankings 29 years of age I think she's here with her father actually it's, it's gonna need to give her quite a bit of support I think after this the way this first game is going Obviously, you mentioned that they've played quite a lot before. They're both from the northwest. Do you think that's gonna? Whose favour is that gonna work in? Do you reckon that's gonna help Cortese because she's gonna be confident, or do you reckon Chadwick will take something from that? The fact that she's played Cortese a lot and she knows her game. It's hard to say because I don't I don't know these two too well enough. I know from from my experience when I played somebody higher ranked, but I'd play them a lot. It, it favoured me right, because. Yeah. Um, there wasn't any pressure on me and I felt like I could really go for it. Um, it's not looking that way at the moment from Chadwick, although she's just picked up a couple of points now. Yeah, again, I think this court, it's a very it's a fast court. Um, yeah. And it can take a little bit of time to get used to the bounce on <laughs> here. And <laughs> Talking of bounces, that was uh, a little bit fortunate. She needed it though, Chadwick. Yeah, I think sort of she's starting to play her way into this a bit now, getting used to the to the bounce and the speed of the court. Um. Just as I say that, <laughs> 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 commentators curse Luke. <laughs> you learn all about that. Yeah. <laughs> Next four matches. Down. Cortese is she's 30 in, in the world and she must be pretty highly seeded for this this event. Oh, 
we'll get uh, get our team of researchers onto that one. <laughs> Vote for Shadwick. Vote. Not happy with that one. Watching Uncle Ball Ortiz and she's a absolutely flabbergasted. And I have to say, from that angle, it looked fairly short. It wasn't the best volley drop, but no. it was short enough, I felt. Yeah, 100%. Chadwick's back in this now. 6 8. Within two points. Yeah, that's one thing I do know about her, actually. She, she's a fighter. And uh, that tournament I mentioned in Nantes, um, she had some hard matches to get there to the final. I think she lost out to Hannah Ramadan oh really? back then. Who's also the, is she still here? She no, was she a graduated uh, in December. Yeah, um, but yeah, she's spent, she was here for four years, did undergrad and a master's um, in physiotherapy. And so she's just playing full time now. She's living back in Egypt. Got right, yeah, she's a talented player. Yeah, she's, she's, down. she's great. Seven um, she's nine. One of the best players that we've had at Not Nottingham. Um, and, and a good team player as well. Yeah, she was great. She got on with like all the girls. And, and obviously she was a lot better than most of the other girls that we had here standard wise but she used to get on court with them all the time and that helped them it brought them their games along um, and she's a good personality had to have yeah. around as well yeah just another unforced error Seven. from chadwick Game she's she's done well to sort of get a bit of a run going in this first game because it was looking a bit dire 7-1 she's managed to get a little bit of respect here and another point Just one more, and Cortese could get a little bit edgy. Yeah, she's in the danger zone. If he, uh, <laughs> gets one more. Nine, ten. I think if Chadwick does end up losing this game, this is positive for her going into the second, though. If she can carry on with this momentum. That's a great lob. Look at that. As I mentioned, she's Nine, a fighter. She's probably not going to look at this as one of the best games of her career but she's found herself within touching distance now in this first oh, <laughs> how has she got to a tie break here it's a great effort clearly uh, struggling with the court in the first half of this first game now she's in with a chance of taking it It's a double. And down. From Cortese's perspective, this is difficult, isn't Game it? When you've had, as you know, like when you've had a big lead, almost it's quite easy to switch off, and then obviously Chadwick's come back, and then trying to switch back on again is is really difficult, isn't it? And try and get that focus back. Yeah, it's been uh, yeah, it's been quite uh, psychological this this first game in terms of seesawing confidence. Cortese isn't usually one to panic and there the frustration from Chadwick she was down and out in the first half and then she managed to find a way back into the the first game great shot going into the tie break but it's Cortese that comes through the first 12 10 in eight minutes
15 seconds. Please, one game to love. Le ball. So Julian Corti is kicking off this second game. What are your predictions for this one, Parky? Well, I think uh, Corti, um, as we said, she's the favourite. She's over 20 places higher in, in the world rankings, and she didn't seem to panic too much there with the, the comeback from from Chadwick so in terms of this match I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Cortez but see it doesn't look like it's gonna be easy that's a great and shot from Chadwick and now one all. yeah I think obviously towards the end of that last game Chadwick was saying showing pretty good signs so I think, I think she's definitely gonna get a game or two here it's definitely was a shout yeah, absolutely. And she's hitting the ball with a, a bit more pace now, isn't she? You were talking about at attacking on this court. First aiders. Well, I hope it's games. nothing too serious. <laughs> you probably hear that quite a lot working here. Yeah, there's a lot of them. <laughs> Especially in, uh, I don't know, hockey or handball. It's really good from Three Chadwick four. now. Right side. It's really starting to move Cortese around. Starting to find a feel at the front of the court. Yeah, well, she's been coached by Phil Whitlock, who, uh, as you know, is very good tactically oh. as a player yeah. and as a coach. Yeah. And you can see that in Chadwick. It's been... There's no video review. As we keep saying, she, she had a p poor down. first half of the first game, but she's found a way to get herself into the match. Um. Three or Cortese coached by Annette Pilling. Yeah, Nets here I saw in the crowd. And down. Nets Four, been uh, involved in the game for a long time. She's based in Manchester as well. Yeah, I remember Nat from when I was a junior. Actually That's a long time ago. It's going, it's going <laughs> back now, isn't it? Um, yeah, she was involved on the national squads when I was a junior, probably under 15s, I think. Um, she obviously works with a lot of players. She also works with Manchester University. Um, and Five, coaches Northern three. as well, I think, in Manchester. Yeah, I think that's the right decision. No argument there from Cortez. Just clip the yeah. sidewall. Just checking that the referee was happy with all the pickups. So a good lead for, for Chadwick. I think again the, the ball there was good from Chadwick. Just a bit of a just a bit untidy really, wasn't it? But it was good. Yeah, as we're saying with this court, the it's the, the bounce, it's because the ball kind of sk almost skids and through a little bit, it's it's quick and it doesn't bounce that high. It's you get a lot of those sort of pickups, especially for someone like Chadwick, who's tall and if there's any sort of I guess limitations to a game, he's going to be getting down low. Um, and like that there, he saw the quick boast and. Five, six, well, I don't hold. think the problem was getting get, getting low though. I don't think she even saw it. <laughs> <laughs> Nor did we. Whipped, whipped <laughs> it around. 
If you had to play somebody for uh, for a tenor at this venue, Six. would you play with your style of game? Would you be on this glass court or the back courts? Uh, yeah, I play on this court. I really. You like would. It. Yeah, yeah. I'm a big, big glass court fan. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's probably just because the rallies are shorter. <laughs> <laughs> if I'd have asked you that ten years ago, you'd be on the back courts. Yeah, hundred percent. I'd be on the back courts with the heating turned up, be flying around. And you, you haven't changed one bit in ten years. And you st still look, still look like twenty-one. <laughs> it's good. It's, uh, it's moisturizer. It's good moisturizer. <laughs> Great skin routine. You have to send me the link for those. <laughs> Oh, wow, that Thanks. is how to play a cross court drop shot, just feathering it into the nick. Absolute roller here from Chadwick. Oh, and again, same area. Nine. Do drop in. And Cortese hasn't done a lot wrong here. Well, you think of Cortese more more as a shot maker compared to Chadwick, but two fantastic shots there. Seven, nine. But Cortese staying in touch. She generally likes to keep the pace a little bit high, you'd say, in the hitting. Yeah, I think so. I mean, she's, she's probably slightly more mobile than, than Chadwick. She can try and use that to her advantage. Poor error there, you could see real frustration from Chadwick, quite rightly. Yes, Eight, nine. Were you a fan of glass courts back in the day, or were you very traditional? Yeah, I was. Um, Usually because it meant you'd done well in the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when I was playing because we weren't as, as prevalent back then, you know. Courts like this being uh, being permanent didn't happen as often. But, um, I mean, obviously they, they vary quite a lot. Um, they were, when I was playing, there were quite a lot of Perspex courts. Yeah. And yeah. they changed to being more glass, which is less forgiving when the ball's tight. Just a bit of a query on the on the line we'll here. Play let on it, play let on it, <laughs> clearly not happy with the let. Nine all. What did, did you see that? Play and could you? It, I, I mean, your eyes are better than mine. Yeah. Marginally. <laughs> Good job, PJ is not here. I actually thought it was in, but down. Ooh, that was close. Ten nine. Really Ten close. Nine. I mean. It could have gone up and we'd have been applauding Chadwick. You've got to attack on here, as we keep saying, but it's clipped the top of the tin and it's given a game ball for a tool of lead to Cortese. Yeah, big momentum shift here. Obviously, Chadwick leading for the majority of this game and it's just come away from her in the... Oh, the she's overcooked stages. it. Overcooked it. Rachel Chadwick, absolutely disgusted with herself, but... Cortese, as you say, did really well to, to come back. She looked like she was going to lose that second game. But Cortese has taken it 11-9 in nine minutes. She leads by two games to love.
15 seconds. So a lot of work to be done now for Rachel Chadwick. I'm not sure of the um, if her father is a good player or how much knowledge he's got, but this is going to be. Doesn't always matter, does it? You, know, you need a lot of encouragement, and she played pretty well in that second. Yeah, I mean, she was obviously she was leading for the majority of it. She had two to three point cushion most of the way through the game, and then. Just at the, the latter stages, it just kind of came away from her. There was a couple of decisions, a bit of a break in her focus, and obviously Cortese took advantage of it, which I think is probably one of the, the biggest things at sort of this level because they're not massively different in rankings. Um, and a lot of the time, the, differ the actual difference is just mental focus when it comes down to the business end. Absolutely. And look at this. <laughs> Again, just an um, unbelievably quick start for one of the players. And it's very much what the doctor ordered in terms of Chadwick, if she's going to have a chance in this match. Yeah, the squash that we're seeing from Chadwick, she's definitely capable of, of winning this match. It's just whether she can keep it together for long enough. Yeah, and as you alluded to, occasionally she does blow up, doesn't she, temperament-wise? She gets very just frustrated with herself, not you know, not anyone else, but it can sort of affect one or two points. That's very tight work from Cortese. Cool as a cucumber. <laughs> yeah, Cortese, she's pretty calm, isn't she? She's uh, not heard anything really from her. Just, just not a squeak. No. Going about a business. Just rushing it a little bit there, Chadwick. She's doing the right thing though, trying to step up the court and attack and take the ball early. But perhaps went a little bit flat on that volley boast. shot. The set up for the wasn't it? The overhit length from Chadwick there you see coming off the back wall. Nice and easy for Cortese. A little bit of luck there. Do you find that area often on this court? <laughs> Local knowledge? Um I don't actually. I think it's probably <laughs> just because my cross courts don't <laughs> aren't, aren't accurate. Never make the side no, wall. yeah they don't make the side wall. <laughs> Straight down the middle. been a massive drop off here from Chadwick three or four hours in a row and the lucky the lucky Nick and Corsese is back in this after being down five love that's quick from, from Cortese impressive movement yeah, she's a good mover Cortese I'm been impressed with this. She's got a good frame, pretty powerful. Yeah, I think if these two were athletes, well, they are athletes, squash player athletes, but in athletics, I think Ortiz would be the sprinter, and Chadwick the long jumper. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> maybe even a high jumper. Yeah. Both with uh, really good at attributes for squash. Seven, six. Chadwick being vocal again. Seven six down. Just 
bit speculative there from the back of the court. Great width on the cross court from Chadwick there. Second bounce, just as the ball's hitting the side wall, it's going to be a stroke. Good play here from Chadwick, really taking the ball early, making Cortese do some work. She's keeping it going as well. It's good play. And there you hear the roar from Chadwick. She's pretty fiery, isn't she? She <laughs> is, yeah. She's she roaring. <laughs> pretty vocal and a fist pump as well. Yeah, as I said earlier, she, she really doesn't give up, and that's uh, it's a great quality. Nine all. C certainly deserves this this a game, doesn't she? At least definitely. Chadwick. Yeah, I've been like beginning stages of the last two games. She's been really impressive. Like I said, it's just she's just dropped off, and there's been the odd odd mistake here and there. And Cortese has taken advantage of it. Oh wow, that was a fantastic shot from the back of the court. Backhand boast, whipped in. Some ferocity. That was the the stroke earlier, or what she wanted to be a stroke. So Chadwick has a game ball. To take this to a fourth. Will she convert, Parky? Well, I hope she does because, as we said, she does deserve it, and she's she's played some good squash here. Certainly doesn't deserve to go out in three. There's the chance, and she's gone for it. I mean, perhaps. I don't know what you'd have done there. It's easy from here, but. Maybe just a little soft drop shot with some margin for error. Yeah, yeah, she's on gone the for it there. Yeah, I mean, she's slapped the top of the tin. Cortese was floundering in the, in the back. So another tie break here. And another chance for Cortese in this third. That's a clever shot. Clever yep. shot. Not going for the nick. No. Just fading it across. Good awareness here from Cortese. Cortese's first match ball just to get her into the second round of this AJ Bell National Championships. See uh, a deep breath there from Cortese. Obviously feeling it a little bit physically. Just clipping the side wall there and giving the point away. So parity in this tie break. It's one match ball saved for Chadwick. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can only imagine what happened there because we got the uh, the front view. Here we go. Oh. 
I mean, she went for that boast, but she got a little bit of luck, didn't she? She got <laughs> Well, more than a little bit. So another game ball here for, for Chadwick. Another chance. She's still very relaxed, Cortis. She's obviously got a two-game to love lead, but... Oh, dear, not anymore. Not anymore. Chadwick gets the game that she deserves, at least. Taking that third game in another tie break. And there the two coaches go off to their charges as Chadwick takes the third. 13-11, 11 minutes. Cortese leads by two games to one. So... Rachel Chadwick started off with a big five five love lead in this game. Then as the game progressed, a few hours creeping in and Cortese found a range. After saving one match ball, Rachel Chadwick managed to take this third, which brings us into a fourth game. Fifteen seconds. On court, please. So Rachel Chadwick takes the third game deservedly. She's pushed hard and as we say, she's played some good squash. Now these two played last month in the Edinburgh BSBA event, which was seems to get stronger and stronger every year. And that she had, uh, I think Kareem Abdul-Gawad won the men's event. Yeah, the men's event was so strong. I mean, you had Kareem abdel Gawad, Joel Makin, Paul Cole, who actually went out pretty early to Greg Laban. Uh, he reached the final, didn't he? He did. Uh, Declan James. Yeah, very Darryl strong. Daryl Selby, Alan Klein. Yeah, it was. I mean, for a for a non PSA event, it's probably one of the one of the strongest ones in the world. You'd probably have to say. Well. Um, the Lobbins, Greg and Donna, were both in the final, and uh, Donna managed to convert, but her husband not. Uh, although we can't complain, it's not a terrible result losing to Gawad. But in the semi finals, these two played, and Julianne Cortis won in four. But, uh, Chadwick apparently picked up a bit of an injury, hence the 11 uh, 2 fourth game. So we've gone to four again. Both players looking pretty fit at the moment and uh, ready for the battle. Yeah, there's no signs of either of these players tiring at the moment. Chadwick's still pretty mobile, so is Cortese. Will a player going to get a run, a real momentum swing again like we've seen so much in this match? Or are they going to stay fairly close through this fourth game? That's 
quite like to see them both sort of playing well at the same time. It's, it's been quite patchy, isn't it? Like one player's had a run of four or five points and another one will have a run of four or five points. There's not been any major periods where they're both playing well together. Um, do, you, do you think that's a case of, um, I mean, I know you love this court, but you've been playing here for, or coaching here for a long time. If neither player is that used to the court, it, it, that can affect it. Yeah, massively. I think uh, this is a, it's probably it's a type of court where if you're if you're controlling and you're getting on top of someone, if you're receiving that, it it literally feels like you can't hit the ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you lose a lot of confidence. Yeah, it's it's really hard to get a rhythm if if someone's moving you around and and, and dominating, which is probably what's been happening here. Strings going for Rachel Chadwick there. It's quite interesting. She almost pretty much gave up that point straight away rather than trying to carry on with the broken string. Yeah, it was it was strange. It's not the uh, the usual scenario where uh, if you're pretty streetwise, then you just try and create a let. <laughs> just yeah, just hit hit it somehow. That's a wonderful shot. Just from hit the back it somehow, of the court. then run into your opponent. <laughs> so sim somehow the. Uh, strings make it come straight back into your forehead <laughs> yeah. but uh, none of that on that last shot from Cortese great control oh, this is closer it's more level the score line's been a lot closer for this oh fourth that was careless from Cortese wasn't it from there it's not sure it was the right shot either. Yeah, talk about Cortese being relaxed. She's almost too relaxed. It's kind of she's just throwing balls in. Looks like she's not really that focused. Well, I think I think she's been um, feeling the fatigue for uh, sort of five to ten minutes now, um, more so than than Chadwick. That's exactly what Chadwick wants. Yeah, she does probably prefer the, the longer matches to, to Cortese. Oh. Stroke. I don't, I don't know about that. What do you think about that, Parky? Was it prevented or affected? <laughs> 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 I mean, she, sw she swung for the ball and she hit the ball, so I, I can't... Like, it didn't seem to have even really affect the shot that much. No. Didn't seem to affect or prevent. No. Definitely not prevent. Yeah, on first glance, a little bit harsh. But perhaps a bit of justice there for, for Chadwick. And both players do seem to be playing well at the same time and, and running at parity now in this fourth. Chadwick getting edgy there. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's the, the one more likely to, isn't she? Yeah. Cortez. Everyone's different. <coughs> Some good play from Cortez. Really moving Chadwick around now. one of the longest rallies of Ooh. the match yeah she she got through didn't she I think she got through the initial minor minor contact I think that's the right decision although it seems harsh Cortese not happy with Chadwick gesturing during the rallies what's the rule on that these days, are you, are you, uh, they changed it recently, didn't they? Well, you're not allowed to do it. Um, 
<laughs> basically. Um, and it's, if it's off-putting the opponent, then you're not allowed to do it. But it's can tight you work. Can you, but can you get can you as as if your opponent is waving their arm around? What is the pe can you get a stroke for that as a, as a penalty or the what? What's the procedure? <laughs> I think it uh, quite as in a lot of these things depends on the referee. But um, recently there's been quite a few players diving around and yeah, and sweat on the floor. So that's different. Yeah, obviously. yeah. Um, you might have to have a word with uh, <laughs> John Massarella. John Massarella, is he <laughs> here? I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm going to speak to him after this game. Get this clarified. It's not finding the line there, Cortez. Oh. She did there. What was that? Yeah, it was, it was yeah, good. It was a miss. I think, wow. I don't think it was clean, but... Well, got exactly the right line, what, whichever part of the racket she hit <laughs> it with. <laughs> and she now has three match balls, Julian Cortez. As I say, I feel the last 10 minutes or so, she's been working really, really hard. Not not particularly enjoying that last part because it's been physically hard. Chadwick's been making it so. But Cortese, well both of these girls are, are fighters, but it's Cortese that comes through. Just thanking Annette Pilling there. She takes the match 12-10, 11-9, 11-13, 11 11-7 in 42 minutes.
half time. Welcome back to this British National Championships 2020, sponsored by AJ Bell here at Nottingham University. First men's match on this glass court today. And we have one of the favourites, Declan James, in more ways than one, against Patrick Rooney, both players of England. Declan James actually hasn't played this event for couple of years and the last time he played was uh, 2017 and he's uh, a Nottingham boy born and bred so he's um, well he has been ranked English number one but there's so much competition this year I think uh, probably more than uh, any of the years for, for a long time so many contenders Deccan James 21 in the world currently but he's got a tough game today against Patrick Rooney, coached by Malcolm Wollstrop, who you can see just there pointing at the court on the right-hand side. He's 60 in the world from the northwest. And these two will know each other's games really well. I'm sure they've trained together quite often. It's interesting that Declan James has coached these days. is Nick Matthew, you can see on the left there on the front row, just doing some kind of training. He's always training. And again, joining for me, me, Simon Park, for this match is Lewis Walters. And you're actually uh, related to Declan James. <laughs> I am, yeah, yeah, he's my cousin. <laughs> and not a lot of people know that, actually. Yeah, that's true. I thought I'd point it out. I, uh, yeah, it's surprising that more <laughs> people don't know that. <laughs> so what's your, uh, what's your predictions for this match? It's um, I know that that Pat Rooney can definitely trouble the, the top players. I mean, he's done it before. Um, I, particularly going back to Nantes again. I keep mentioning Nantes, but I uh, really, really watched a lot of Nantes. Nantes didn't <laughs> well, you? I've been uh, commentating on that one the last <laughs> few years with with Joe Barrington, and um, he really, he really should have beaten James Wallstrop in that event. James uh, actually lost to Declan James in the, uh, that final, yeah, in yeah, the final, yeah. as you will know. As is your cousin. As my cousin, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know a bit more about him than uh, than most of the players on the circuit. But, I mean, obviously, I, I if I had to put my house in it, I'd, uh, I'd back Declan James here. But it's it's going to be a tough match. Yeah, it, it will. And I think, obviously, Patrick's playing style, it'll be quite interesting to see whether how effective that is against Dex. Obviously, Pat likes to attack a lot and mix it up. And it's, uh, as we saw, almost talked about a little bit in the, the last match, Dex being tall... Um, Patrick changing the angles and he likes to hold it a lot sort of what sort of damage that can do or will do to Declan <laughs> sometimes I think when you've got two players with perhaps some similarities it can that can be a problem for the for the lower ranked player yeah, and yeah playing to the hands of the of the higher ranked player the more experienced player Patrick Rooney's just been out in the USA, um, playing a couple of events out there. He actually, uh, the only reason I know that is because he was staying with Ollie Holland, um, which he's, uh, Ollie Holland's a Nottingham boy who's junior European champion. Exceptional junior. Yeah. Ollie Holland, yeah. European junior champion. So he's based in the States now. Yeah, he just he moved out there in the summer. Um, so I think Patrick was staying with him. I think they're sort of similar age group, so they caught up out there. Um, Ollie also went to Nottingham Uni. So many Nottingham connections. There's a lot of Nottingham connections. There's too many. Well, Deck looks very keen uh, to take the ball early on that backhand side. He likes to try and control proceedings from there. Yeah, yeah, he, do. he likes that backhand side, backhand volley drop. Uses his reach. Nightmare to play an alley game against. <laughs> I'm sure you've played a few against him. 
Yeah, I've heard a couple in the last last twenty years against them. <laughs> <laughs> Rooney uh, recently reached the, the final of the, the London Open. Just uh, going out to Wilstrop in the final that time in four. Yeah, so I think he's been he's consistently been testing his top top players, top English players. Anyway, he, I think rarely they struggle to get him off in three, don't they? He always yeah, yeah. He's got he's got a lot of quality, hasn't he? Yeah. And I think I think he's got all the uh, the attributes. Certainly with the racket, he's got a lot of confidence in that department. Definitely, yeah. I think for him, it's always been just his focus and and keeping the ball out the tin. Really, I mean, it's it's sort of as you know, with, with those players that can that have got a lot of skill and can take the ball in regularly. Well, it's it's trying to find the right time to do it and not overdoing it. You know, um, I think if you look at someone like like James, for example, when he was younger, I remember watching him play, and he's, he had a tremendous amount of skill there. But when he started to move up the ranks, it's kind of using that skill to do, do the right things, which are, isn't always the most sort of flashy option, is it? No, no. Well, he, I mean James Wallstrop, has, has got the flair, but he can play straight all day long, can't he? Yeah. He can do the simple things. Yeah, I think it's going to be a sort of similar thing for Patrick. He's obviously got the skill, but it's trying to, trying to figure out when to use it um, and how to use it, you know. It's a wonderful long drop from James. So he's off to quite a con convincing lead here, the high seed. Yeah, we saw in the previous match there's a lot of momentum shifts and swings. Hopefully there won't be as much of that uh, in this match. Yeah, I think obviously Declan from Nottingham, so he gets to play and train on this court quite regularly. Um, I don't know how much Patrick's managed to to get on this court. Um, obviously, there's a, there's a glass court in Manchester, isn't there? Which I'm assuming that he's probably... Yeah, he would have trained on that quite a few times. Yeah. But th as you know, there's always slightly oh, slight nuances and, and idiosyncrasies about the, the different yeah. courts around. There's one in St. George's, there's, there's one here now, there's, no, there's one in Manchester. They're all slightly different. And then, obviously, the ones around the world... Deck actually plays um, PSL here as well, doesn't he? Yeah, so yeah, he does. Nottingham Uni. Yeah, so he spends a lot of time on this court. Mm. Oh, just a little bit fortunate. There's yeah, the, the apology yeah. from Declan. How much do you think, um, I don't know if you've talked to him about this, it obviously he's had two years away from the event. Um, yep. It's 2017, the last time he played. I think he, well, he was injured last year. Was he injured the year before as well? I don't know why he didn't play it the year before, actually. I know last year, yeah, it was maybe four or five days before. He was he was literally just doing, just hitting some lengths, doing a length game with uh, one of the pros at the park and rolled his ankle. <coughs> just one of those uh, annoying, innocuous injuries. Yeah, it wasn't like he was going flat out or anything like that. It was just it was a pretty gentle hit and just, just twisted it and, like, Timing-wise, couldn't have been any worse, really. How much do you think um, it's a case here of of not of trying not to be over keen and over enthusiastic? So there a couple of reasons, really: the fact that he hasn't played since 2017, and also that he's a local a local hero, as it were. Yeah. You know, he's, you're going to be really excited, aren't you, about, yep. about playing this? And he's he's and he's a, a serious contender as well for this event he's been ranked number one in England he's still one of the top seeds here yeah I think it's I mean talk about the preparation for the event it, it's, it's going to be about just preparing for it the same as you prepare for any other event like you say he's 
there's the other things going off outside of the court. A lot of friends and family are going to come down to watch, but it's being professional and disciplined enough to sort of, when it's time, it's match time, to kind of just block all of that out and just treat it like another match. It must be something in your family because you're all just really uh, unfazed. <laughs> 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 really, just really cool. Just, <laughs> just unfazed. I don't know about cool, I think it's just unfazed. <laughs> See on the uh, front row there, Declan's dad, Mark James, um, and then again unfazed, unfazed by anything. Unfazed, Mark yeah. went. <laughs> if Mark blinks during this match. I'll be <laughs> That'd be amazing. I'll be amazed. Pat Rooney really being aggressive around the middle there, but backfiring a little bit. Yeah, similar to, to that that first the first match, Deck obviously off to a great start. Pat's kind of finding his ra his range now and getting used to the court. Rallies are getting a little bit longer. Oh. Perhaps just rushed it a little bit there. I mean, it was the right shot, wasn't it? It was definitely on. Yeah, and he likes to take it in from that area. So it's, again, maybe a little bit of what, what you're talking about. Just his first match, tournament that he hasn't played for a couple of years, just trying to get settled in, really. Uh, I don't think hitting one or two tins in this first game is going to deter him. No, absolutely not. And, he, and he's got a good little cushion as well. Oh, some tight work. That's a great shot. Lots of head nodding there. <laughs> <laughs> Rooney was uh, clattering around in the back corner. It's always a nice feeling when you uh, when your opponents, sort of well, you don't want them to be hurt, obviously, <laughs> but clattering the racket against the wall in in vain. Yeah, he could have had an easier first round, couldn't he? Or um, a first match on the glass court, sorry, here for uh, Declan. Yeah. I think uh, tricky, to be honest, to be honest I think it, this has changed because he... It, there was a redraw, wasn't there? And I think he was actually maybe playing Alan Klein first. So this is probably better mm. yeah. than his initial draw in terms of rankings anyway. Um. Oh, he's really finding that, that length here, Declan James. recently losing out to another top uh, English young English player George Parker in five 14 12 in the fifth in Pittsburgh recently how long ago was that it was just um, just a couple of weeks ago a couple of weeks ago how long did it used to take you to get over jet lag <laughs> <laughs> uh, depends on uh, on where it was, and how bad it was. Going to the States, uh, places like um, that event was Pittsburgh, not too bad. Not too bad. Not too bad because uh, I'd find, well, you do find that you wake up really early. Yeah. Um, and that didn't bother me too much because you could just, I'd just get up, go for a coffee and train, and yeah. Obviously, you'd be f you'd be struggling a little bit early evening, wouldn't you? Um, but not so bad as um, California. I always used to find that the struggle for me go was was not going. It was mostly coming back. Yeah, and and then if you fly east, it's basically flying east. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. If you fly east to Hong Kong and places like that, it was I, I found it bad there. Well, that was He's an unbelievable get if you got that. One of Declan James' favourite shots, the cross court nick on the forehand side. There it goes. Is he going to question? He's not going to question it. He likes that one as well. Normally, it's the first time he's really gone. All out for the forehand kill, straight. Just clipping the tin. It's a good mini comeback from Rooney. Yeah, definitely. Again, just finding his range now. and He's using the height really well. I think playing someone tall, sometimes it can be... Uh, you 
you sometimes be advised to not play high because they are tall, but I think uh, sometimes that's the only way to get the, the ball past them. Yeah, just, just really high or yeah. really low. Yeah, it's that mid-range that he wants to avoid. This is some good work, though. Good touch. He's, oh. getting, he's getting him moving now. Oh, wow. Yeah. That was clever as well. Just uh, he had a bit to do there, Rooney, and there was a possibility of Declan almost moving into the swing, which he didn't, and, and it almost made him hold the ball, and he just got the right pace on the cross court. Yeah, and he got that some wasn't extra easy. No, <laughs> there's a lot of things going off there. It really was. Now he's an intelligent player, Rooney. He's got a really good backhand hold, oh. Rooney, just sort of yeah. built, built into his swing. I don't know if you've been on court with him much, but even just when he's hitting a drive on that side, because he's, he's got so many options and he there's a hold built in, it, it's really hard to to feel comfortable against him. Yeah, I have been on court with him uh, not that recently, but maybe a year ago, and I didn't feel very comfortable. <laughs> it's possibly something to do with my age. Yeah, I was going to say, is that just because you're on a squash court? <laughs> yeah, just as <laughs> soon as I walk through the door. Just putting your shoes on. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's done well to go round there. He could have come round the back and possibly looked for the stroke, but he's played the ball. There he goes. It's going to be affected or prevented. I, I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear that. I think there was still room for you to play the ball. <laughs> well, I'm not really sure. I mean, <laughs> he's hit him on the backswing. How's, how's the room for him to play it he's if he's, he's hit him? He's hit his left hand, if you just from that replay. Watch watch Rooney's left hand here. Yeah. Just clipped the, uh, yeah. the knuckles. So there probably wasn't room to play the ball. If no, it has to be a stroke. <laughs> there wasn't room if you could hit him <laughs> to play the ball. but. <laughs> We should get you in the uh, referee's seat. Get somebody, we need somebody nice and chilled. Nice, yeah, I could think of a few things I'd <laughs> probably rather do than a referee. It's not not my cup What of if tea. the money was right? Um, <laughs> You've poked up a bit. I know, now. yeah. <laughs> Everyone's got their price. This is close now. He's got to be careful here, James, because if Rooney gets this game, Rooney's the type of player that once he starts oh to get confident... Wow. Like that. Like that. His tail will go up. Yeah. And that was really well anticipated. I mean, it wasn't... It was slightly shallow, you have to say, from Declan James. But two game balls now for the underdog, Patrick Rooney, who is looking pretty sharp. got Malcolm Wolstrop in his corner. He's been working with uh, quite a few he's years now. He's doing well at picking those up. Oh, oh wow. It's not got that one. It's well finished there from Declan James. One of the hardest shots to play that, isn't it, with such a high backswing? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can play it, but to play it well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I should say. Yeah, I yeah. played it. Probably, <laughs> yeah. hit the, probably hit the service yeah. line, but I played it. <laughs> It's tight work down this backhand side. Uh oh, it's well adjusted. From That's Rooney. tight. Both players really love the backhand. Pretty accurate. Oh. I think that's a little bit harsh. I yeah. think it was uh, more of a safety element there. Yeah, well, it, and also Rooney's line, he had to come out because the ball, the ball came out into the middle, didn't he? So he needed yeah. to go through Declan, really, to have enough space to swing. And it all happened very quickly, as you'd expect, uh, between yeah. these two. So into the tie break in this first game. He's finding his length on the forehand side, Declan. Right there. Rooney really probably wants to keep it off this, this forehand. 
quite a bit of contact. Rooney's doing well at going round. Yeah, well, I think after that last decision yeah, as well, what a shot. shot. That's a great shot. After that last decision, he's got to uh, he's got to go and play the ball. Anything yeah. slightly off, and he's he's not going to get a let. Malcolm Moore's dropped. Did, really, did he that. just clap his own he shot did. there? <laughs> <laughs> Patrick just gave his <laughs> racket a little, little tap. I think he did, actually, but... Yeah. Malcolm Wallstrup was applauding, which is quite it's rare. It's rare. Have you ever had Malcolm? That was. Oh. Oh. Um, have you had Malcolm in your corn before? Obviously, you've, you've trained with him a lot, but have you actually um, had him years back? Yeah, a long time ago. Um, I think he helped me uh, in Egypt, but also as a as a junior, particularly when I was uh, having coaching with him back in the day. Was that a scary experience having him speak to you <laughs> in between games, or no, not at all. No, not uh, you know, not when you're used to him in coaching every day. Yeah, I, I worked with him a bit, and uh, I mean, I got along with Matt really well. But I just imagine it would be quite scary if I if I had not played a good game <laughs> and I had Malcolm coming down to speak to me. It's been a long time actually since he has spoken to me in between games, but he uh, he just keeps it very simple. Yep. You know, like like he does with his with his coaching day to day, it's, it's always very simple. And I'm sure it, I'm sure it hasn't changed. Oh, that's a that's a big first game. You hear the roar from Declan James, one of the contenders for this year's nationals. A bit of a re relief, you would say, for your cousin there, as Declan James takes the first game. 13-11 in 18 minutes. So Declan James got off to a strong start with a 4-1 four, four lead. Um, some great variations and holds. Patrick built his way into the game as he started to get used to the court. Then towards the, uh, the latter stage of the game, Declan saving two game balls to force a tie break and then eventually take the game So Lewis, if you were um, obviously Declan James is is your cousin, but Patrick Rooney is the is the underdog. If you were his coach, and he's obviously lost the first game. Patrick's coach or Dex coach? Patrick's coach. Okay. What would you? I mean, there's hardly anything in it, was there? But what would you say to him just to sort of tweak things a little bit to to try I and? I think he played a good at the back end of that. I think he was playing the right game tactically. He was mixing it up. He was using the holds. Um, sort of not letting Declan control that, that backhand area that he likes so much. Um, 
and I think he just got a little bit unlucky. There was there's no let decision, um, which I think caused a little bit of a uh, focus drop, and then Declan took advantage of that. But tactic wise, I think he was he had it spot on really. Yeah, well, he d as we said, as we keep saying, both these players like the back end, don't they? It's a strength area, as, as we see here, both trying to to get the advantage, but Patrick Rooney just didn't see that one. No. Great line from Declan James. Yeah, I think psychologically as well, Declan taking that game will be a bit of a blow for Patrick. Yeah. And also, and it seems obvious, but a lift for, for Deck. Yeah, I think ju it's just relief, isn't it? And I mean, as, yeah. as you know, like playing first round of any tournament, just getting that first game under your belt is a massive relief, and you can sort of start to let your game flow a little bit more after that. Absolutely, that is wonderful touch from Patrick Rooney to get his first point on the board in the second game. Couldn't be any more accurate. Made the error. He had the opportunity there, and he's made the error. That's an area where, as you alluded to earlier, the difference between the top players, and I'm including Declan James in that, being 21 in the world, is consistency, isn't it? He's been. He's He's been ranked a few places higher, obviously. But it's the consistency and not making, ha I mean, hardly any unforced errors. You can't, you just can't afford to at the top level. No. I mean, if you think about the length of the rallies and how hard it is to actually get a point against another top player, you can't afford to be gifting them pl um, points. You know, you've worked hard to get yourself into that position. And once you're in that position, you've got to take advantage of it. Just, just stayed in, didn't it? Yeah. So I'm impressed with the uh, the length hitting as this match wears on from Declan James. He's, as you say, he's, he's used to this court, but he's really pummeling those back corners. Not giving Pat Rooney much time to oh to yeah. set up. That was a bit lucky, wasn't it? Sort of a strange bounce. 6-1, another strong lead for James. The beginning start, the beginning phase of this game. Whether Patrick can turn it around again. Too many errors. Too yeah. many errors. I mean, that could have almost been a stroke. A bit lucky for Declan James, but he's really pushing on. You can see with his body language, the relief of winning the first and, and, and just really uh, settling into this event, this court, the tournament. Tricky opponent, Patrick Rooney. Yeah, he's kind of a, sort of almost gone inside himself a little bit Patrick hasn't he he's not the first game oh he dear. Was what What's there? Go sorry sorry Lewis this uh, I think it's quite a poor decision what, what? it was uh, this looks like a stroke yeah, to me yeah it's been given a no let oh really wow <laughs> <laughs> you were chatting away yeah chatting away I wasn't paying any attention <laughs> to the actual squash <laughs> right it's uh, a no let it's one of those things again uh the top players just deal with it, don't they? You yeah. See yeah, I mean, there's there. nothing you can do about it once the decision's no. given, is there? Oh, is he? Oh, oh he's got That is really <laughs> the agility there from Pat Rooney. I think, you think in some of these situations here at the front and kind of around this backhand area where he's making a lot of effort to go round James... Is he almost putting himself at a bit of a disadvantage by almost trying too hard to play th play the ball? I think some of I them. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. But um, I suppose by one or two of the decisions, he's felt like he's had to. Yeah. And that's the way that the the referee, the style of refereeing here. Yeah. Which is the style of refereeing that that we want in the PSA. We want players to play the ball, but yeah. if there is genuine uh, interference, then it has to be a let. Yeah, I mean enough interference. Yeah. 
I mean, because obviously Dex is he's tall, and so if you're always having to go around the taller player, then that gives the taller player a bit of an advantage, doesn't it? Um, so it's just trying to get that right, I think, from a referee's point of view. There we go, there's some of the skill. <laughs> the, crowd <laughs> the crowd didn't even see that. <laughs> I don't think we did. No. It's just, um, again, damage limitation, really, for Pat Rooney at this stage. Yeah, I think he wants to. F he's going to want to feel like he's playing well again by the end of this first uh, end of the second game do you know what I mean yeah absolutely he's um he's found himself at uh, a real disadvantage and Declan James really pushing on here this is the right idea from Rooney as well just to make the rallies a little bit longer for for a while that's well played from Declan yeah. James yeah I think in that the, the first he once he got some work into <laughs> to James and the rallies were extended that's when as a result of that he started to get some joy at the the back end of the first game but he had to put the work into him first really precise play there from Rooney Another point on the board. And again. Yeah, this is better from Rooney. Obviously, it could be could be too little, too late. Well, you know what it's like, don't you? When you when you go far down, you can really relax and and play some tremendous stuff. And you often wonder <laughs> yeah, why <laughs> why you don't do it yeah. earlier on in the game. Yeah, he's doing that now. Two feet off the ground. Again. Oh, this is great stuff. I mean, if he one more, one or two more points here, and he's Dex in the danger zone, isn't he? Oh, oh wow! That was some incredible flair yeah. here from Pat Rooney. I mean, some of these shots he just wouldn't have played earlier on in in the game, or even in the match. It's just. It's all flowing now, and yeah. I mean, you're talking about being on court with him. I, I have seen these shots. Uh, well, I say I've seen them. I've seen them after they bounced twice. Oh, he's got that he's again. Uh, Go on. Oh, he's got it. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> the racket goes, and Deccan James a major relief again for yeah, for he's him. He's not looking happy, James. He nearly nearly let it slip, didn't he? I think he got that. Yeah, he did. He got it. Oh, some, been he got some it. Great pickups here from uh, Pat Rooney, but the referee's not having that one as Declan James takes the second 11-8 in ten minutes. He leads by two games to love. So a strong start for Declan James in this second game. Went off to a flying 7-1 lead. Patrick Rooney struggling to deal with the quality of James's length. Uh, however, Patrick sa managing to save six or seven match balls, match balls, game balls, to get back to 8-10. And then Declan James finally taking the game 11-8. He leads two games to love. There you see the uh, the match card, the run of points between Declan James and, and Pat Rooney. And it just shows the uh, the ebb and flow of, of squash matches quite often. A little four-point run for Declan James in the middle of the of the second, which was quite damaging. And 
you thought it was pretty much over, but there you see the five point run from Pat Rooney to make it a little bit difficult, a little bit interesting right at the back end, but uh, still two love to Declan James. A taste of his own medicine there for Declan James. Really having to to dig there. And I think if Pat Rooney can play like he did towards the end of that second a little bit, maybe he won't get as many chances, but cut out the unforced errors and use his accuracy, he's got he's got a chance at least of, of taking a game here. Yeah, definitely. I mean he's shown that he's got the skill and he's capable of dealing with Declan's game I think it's just as we s talked about before it's just putting putting that together for a long enough period of time because obviously Declan's going to respond like there I mean it, it was on wasn't it but you just can't afford to miss those kind of shots at this level no and I think also like the margin for error that he's going for there I mean Declan's out of position Th there's no need to, to go just above the tin yeah, could have had a bit of margin there, couldn't he? Yeah. Two or three inches. I think as, as long as Patrick's confident in, confident in his own fitness, there's no reason for him not to go a little bit higher on, on the short stuff and just accept that the rallies are going to be longer and just kind of back himself. What do you think... Talk a little bit about Declan in terms of this season. He had a bit of a, a difficult start, didn't he? But recently he's had a couple of really, really close games with um, with Gawad, which is obviously no mean feat. So do you think he's coming back to um, the kind of confidence levels he had it a year or 18 months ago? I think, I think he's working hard to do that, yeah. I mean, it's difficult with Gawad, isn't it? Because Gawad has three, <laughs> three teams with a lot of people. So I think he's... Uh, I think he's had probably games with, I can't remember who else he's played, but um, recently. Well, he had a, I mean, a few months ago, he, he lost to Abu Algar in the uh, in St. George's Hill quite comprehensively. He didn't play well at all there, so that was one of the kind of matches I think I think in, about. In, in TOC where he beat, he beat Yip um, from Hong Kong. Yep, that's, three, good, that's a good win. 3 1. I, I think the big thing for him is, is get, getting the lower rank players off um, convincingly I think yeah. that's probably something that he, he struggled with I think he always plays these kind of matches yeah I think he always plays well against people ranked above him um, but it's the lower rank players that he'll he'll struggle with and then obviously as, he, as you're going deeper into the tournaments if you're kind of having long longer matches with players that you probably should be getting off three love then that's going to eat into your your reserves later on when you when you have when you are playing a higher ranked player does he ever ask for your advice no <laughs> <laughs> dear no no maybe maybe it's <laughs> probably a good reason for that I think since he started working with Nick there, that's going to sort of help a lot on more the mental side than anything. You know, I think game style wise, they're probably pretty different players, Declan and Nick, when, when Nick was playing. But I think Deck can learn a lot from him, just his approach to the game and how disciplined obviously Nick was and how um, sort of. Um, particular he was and analytical about every little part of of this game yeah so you think it's you think it's a good match yeah I think I think I mean see I mean he started working with them 
towards the end of last year and I think um, like you say his last couple of tournaments he's sort of he's played well and sort of shown some signs that he had like towards in last last season um, so yeah I think I think it's looking positive I mean Deck um, isn't one of those he's not a party boy is he in terms of like I know it goes out occasionally but <laughs> He will. He works hard, is what I'm trying to say as well. Yeah, when he's when yeah. he's training, um, he doesn't mess mess around, does he? He's very no, yeah, he's very yeah, concentrated yeah. on the yeah, yeah, on the uh, on what's going on in the court, in the gym or whatever. Yeah, there's not a there's not a lot of laughs. On the court. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't actually meaning that, but that's uh, another insight to the world of Deccan James. Well, Nick Matthew likes to put a few quips in, so not sure how that's going to Great for a drop. <laughs> I've been really impressed with Rooney's retrieving. Obviously, everybody talks about, we've talked a lot, a lot about his skill and his hold and his ability to take the ball into the front of the court, but his movement, his retrieving ability has been... Oh, it's been phenomenal. Yeah. Really impressive. He's so... Uh, Looks like he's worked a lot in the in that department. He's a strong boy, isn't he? Like yeah, and, and being that tall as well, it's um, it's quite hard to obviously be that agile. Yeah. And he has to be today. Declan James is just getting better and better during this match. Eight five. Sweeney's going to respond. It needs to be soon. No, wait, he'll wait till match ball down. Wait till match ball down and then play four of the best shots <laughs> of his life, <laughs> probably. These are pretty hard movements for Irene. He's, doesn't, he's not really showing any signs of slowing down. That's a great pickup. I know, pick it's up. incredible. Yeah. And Declan James reaches that one. Some brutal movements from both players. Fired in really well from Declan James. Really positive, as we say, one of his favourite areas there around the around the short line on uh, the backhand volley. Yeah, I think again it was it was the tightness that did it, wasn't it? It was just how direct. Yeah, yeah and it's forced um, a bit of a silly speculative return of serve from Patrick Rooney into the floor. So it's five match balls for Declan James, one of the favourites for this year's. AJ Bell 2020 Nationals and a great chance for him to go through in three and he does it a very very impressive performance in the end from Declan James was looking a bit difficult at some points of that match it certainly was a, a tough draw for him against Patrick Rooney but he comes through 11th sorry 13 11 11 8 11 5 in 40 minutes Declan James through to the next round Another strong start for Declan in this third game. Patrick Rooney coming through in the later stages again, but too little too late for Patrick.
half time. Welcome back to the British National Squash Championships 2020, sponsored by AJ Bell here at Nottingham University. And we've just had one of the contenders in the men's event come through in three. We've now got one of the top contenders in the women's event, Sarah Jane Perry, up against young pretender Kira Marshall. Kira Marshall currently studying at uh, Birmingham University coached by Chris Tasker she's got a ranking of 197 currently but um, she's only 18 years of age still a junior so I'm sure it's uh, a case of just playing a few more events and getting a bit more experience and, and going up the rankings looks like she's pretty handy in the knock up not overawed by Sarah Jane Perry Sarah Jane Perry, obviously coached by Rob Owen, and uh, has achieved so much so far in in her career. She, of course, won this title before. How much do you think she'll be buoyed by the withdrawal of of Tesney Evans, or are there just too many contenders for that to be an issue? Yeah, I don't think I I don't think that's gonna going to affect things massively um, obviously for with Sarah coming into this event um, like we talked about with Deck obviously Deck not playing the event for two years Sarah coming into the event um, as one of as the number Fine. one seed it's it's just another it's just another event and she's got to prepare for it just like every other event and and take it one match at a time well, you've got to beat who's in front of you don't you? That's the that's the way you pick up the trophy. You don't worry about who you're playing. Exactly. Yeah. Just concentrate on your your own race. Sarah Jane Perry Thank currently you. ranked seven in the world. She has been as high as six and previously. Always entertaining, Sarah Jane Perry, whether it's <laughs> whether it's good or bad. Obviously, she's got some. Uh, some great talent, some great skills. Sometimes some uh, some funny comments to the referees. Yeah, I watched her uh, play Emily Whitlock uh, in the last event they played in. I can't remember which one it was, but it was um, it was pretty entertaining. There was lots of fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> you can imagine. But it's a really big day for Kira Marshall. Sure, it's uh, not a first time on a on a glass court, as we're saying. But glass courts are much more prevalent these days, even in the British British Junior Open. Oh, it's been used for a long time, obviously since Abbeydale, but more recently at Birmingham University. But it's yeah, um, probably it the first time, sorry, Liz, that she's played against somebody of uh, of Perry's calibre. Yeah, and I think that's uh, from Marshall's um, standpoint. That's going to be an uphill battle playing. Sarah Jane Perry, who's obviously ranked a lot higher and also very experienced on the glass court. Marshall actually got to the final of the uh, British Open in the 23s fairly recently, just a few weeks ago, losing out to Katie Malef in three. We have got quite a few... Um, Good young girls though coming through, haven't we? With Alice Green as well. Yeah, Alice definitely. Which is great for uh, for England squash. Um, I think sort of with the recent retirement of Jenny Duncalf and, and Laura Laura Bizarro, um Obviously, Sarah Sarah's at the, the top of the game, and Emily as well. But there's kind of a, almost a, a bit of a gap. Um, age-wise, between between J 
Jet, Jenny and Laura, and then sort of the next next batch of, of girls coming through, you know. So it's good it is sort of for the uh, for the future. Um, yeah, we have yeah we have Lisa Timel playing actually against Alicia Mead. That's actually um, over at the park, known as Nottingham Squash Club. And we have Jasmine Hutton as well playing later on today um, against Alice Green. Two young players. So it is looking good on the uh, on the women's side with the younger players. Yeah, which is great. I think on the men's side, there's always been kind of a constant st constant stream of, of players. Um, not necessarily always right at the top of the game, but there's always there's a lot. The national the men's nationals is always full of quality right down to the qualifying events. You know, um, yeah, uh, always good depth. Yeah. And it's good to see that that's, that's happening in the women's game as well now. Lost the ball. Well, Sarah Jane Perry looking very comfortable and confident so far against her younger opponent. Taking everything in her stride. It's quite a long stride as well. It's, uh, yeah. Always sporting the uh, you know, the I don't know what you call it on the, the right arm. The sleeve. The sleeve. The sleeve. Yeah. I don't. Do you know why that is? She did. Ha she had some problems there. Right. Um. I think it just keeps it warm. <laughs> right. I've not seen it in pink before though. No. Okay. Yeah, because I, I remember a long, a long time ago, maybe sort of four or five years ago. Mohamed El Shabagi used to wear something similar. He had, I think, he had the whole sort of long sleeve um, skins on underneath his t-shirt, um, which I have tried, but it's I find it's, it's hot. <laughs> it's very hot. I think when you're playing, you wanna you wanna feel as as cool and as free as as possible. Um, sort of Can't in the get any cooler than you. Luke. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a shot! That was cool. So I've seen in the men's game as well. Like a lot of the guys now are wearing the uh, the calf calf socks. Are you, do you? No, I'm not uh, an advocate of the of the calf socks. Calf socks. Not, not a thing for me. No. It's not. Uh, it's not big on the racquetball tour. No. <laughs> Sorry, racquetball masters. Racquetball masters. Doesn't Tim Tim Vail doesn't? I think Tim Vail wears them, doesn't he? <laughs> Probably does. <laughs> New slimline Tim Vail. But yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Sort of like it's obviously Nick Matthews, sort of the back end of his career, started wearing the calf socks. Gregory Golshier uses them as well. Uh, Rami Ashur was using them before he retired. Yeah, but what, what, what have those guys achieved? Exa yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start wearing calf socks. <laughs> <about> <laughs> it. You should. <laughs> yeah. So six game balls for Perry in this first. It's not. She's not disgraced herself here, though, Marshall, has she? That's a nice finish. Coolly done from Perry. No, I mean, I think she's been in the rallies. Um, definitely. It's not It's not been a complete walk in the park for, for Sarah. So Sarah Jane Perry takes that first game, 11-4 in just six minutes. She leads by one game to love. There you can see the scorecard. It's it's quite interesting though, isn't it? Just to not not so much in this game, but when the matches are closer, you see the massive run of points there. First point on the board for Marshall, but then Perry dominates in the next six points, and then it's quite comprehensive, really, wasn't it? At the end. Yeah, I think it's been a pattern that we've seen so far today. I think it, it's a pattern in the earlier rounds. What we're seeing now with with one rank, a player ranked significantly higher than the other. There's big runs of points, um, but like you say, when the matches start to get a little bit closer, like further down the, the road in the tournament, um, the later rounds, I think from the, the scorecard perspective, you'll start to see a lot more to and fro in between points, less r less long runs. And I think there it's, um, yeah, when you see five setters and stuff, that's when you really 
if it's maybe a 15 13 in the fifth you really see the changes the subtle changes yeah. in the match and where matches are won and lost did you used to watch a lot of your matches back when you were playing um some of them it, we st started getting a few more kind of copies of and DVDs from England squash sort of late 90s and um, cause obviously if you weren't on TV in the later rounds then you've yeah. you, you know you, your match is lost <laughs> yeah. um, so uh, as they became more and more available yeah I'd I'd, um, I'd watch them particularly with obviously the coaches and yeah try and analyze things especially against some of my rivals like Jonathan Power and Peter Nichol and try and find the weaknesses and where my weaknesses were. Did you used to watch a, watch a lot of your your rivals, your opponents? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I remember speaking to Peter Nichol. Um, oh, not great that finish. Not that long ago. <laughs> uh, no, it was a while ago now. Um, but I remember him saying that he obviously used to watch like Power and, and those guys that is, is kind of immediate rivals, but he said that he didn't used to watch much squash in general um, just because he was so focused on his own his own game he didn't just kind of stick around and watch, watch random squash matches um, in the early rounds because he was just so focused on his game um, so he said the only people that he used to watch were kind of players that he struggled with with which was only one or, one or two players <laughs> yeah it's very true yeah and I think uh I think you get like that. In my experience, I got like that. I was very, very keen when I first came onto the tour, and some of the older players used to take take the mick out of me because I watched every single match, yeah, and had yeah. every single draw. Yeah. When I was, and I used to fill them in, you know, with with an actual pen. Um. And I'd be watching all day long, and I think as you get older, you, that, that starts wearing off a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Concentrate on your own. Uh, Once you've wha watched your 400th squash match <laughs> yeah. for the the month it's, it's all just a, a learning curve isn't it yeah definitely definitely i think obviously nowadays like you were saying earlier there's a lot more squash videos and matches are a lot easier to um to get hold of most matches are streamed or, or it's easy to record a match on your phone or something like that whereas obviously back in the day sort of 100 years ago when you were playing <laughs> yeah, black and white days <laughs> black and white days then it, it it would it was like you said only the later rounds were actually filmed weren't they? Yeah, I think I think the players of, of today just expect it, don't they? Yeah, it's it's always like you say you can even do it on your iPhone. It's uh, it's dead easy to uh, to to do that and then sit with your coach or, or yeah. whoever and analyze afterwards. We're even streaming uh, Yorkshire League these days. Oh yeah! <laughs> wow. Is that is that off your phone or <laughs> the club phone? Club phone. No commentary, but it's just good to, um, you know, for for squash fans just to see you know, some quite high level matches at times. Yeah, she's getting very frustrated. It's just not tight enough from from Marshall. No. Obviously, a bit of a, a golfing class here, but she wants to come off the court here, having taken something from it. I don't think I don't know what she's like, but if she expects to win. You've got to give it a go, obviously. But there is a golf in class at the moment, and she's got to take as much as she possibly can from it, this experience. Oh. oh wow, the strings were singing on that shot, Lou. Yeah, that was a great shot from there. Just caught backhand drop. It just floated in, didn't it? It was almost like a lob drop. And it just rolled out of the nick. Yeah, Sarah's starting to relax. Well, really starting to relax now and just sh show some of her skill. Do you think Sarah will be trying to win every point here? I think so. I, I, and by all accounts, they they know each other quite well because they train in the. They've got different coaches, but they train in the 
uh, the same area of the country in the West Midlands. And um, would she take the bagel? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, she seems pretty pretty ruthless to me most of the time, SJ. But um, maybe with this sort of golf in level, she wouldn't be that mean. She's just looking for the win, basically uh, a comprehensive three-love win. So she takes the second game, 11-3 in five minutes. Sarah Jane Perry leads by two games to love. Fifteen seconds. It'd be nice to see Marshall pick up a few more points here in this third. She's obviously um, been well coached and decent technique and she's had some success at junior level. Yeah, I think she's got she's got a lot of potential. Um, I was thinking this this circumstance, this situation. There's a lot of things that are working against her. Obviously, that we talked about the glass court and then the class of Sarah. It's, it can be a little bit overwhelming just stepping into this this situation, playing Sarah on the glass court in the Nationals. You need it though, don't you? You need these experiences. Massively, yeah. As, yeah. A, as a junior or a young player coming through, there's no, there's no way you're going to get to that feeling, where you get to that uh, point where you're going to win these events or, or go deep if you don't have these kind of experiences. Yeah, definitely. I think it's, it's good to get them out of the way young, to be yeah. honest. You know, obviously, at the moment, it's probably she's probably pretty uncomfortable and not, not enjoying the situation maybe as much as she could be, but... The next time this uh, this happens in sort of years time or or, or wh whenever, then she's going to be more prepared, feel more more at home, and, and sort of have the experience of this, you know. So it's just absolutely. I mean, all the best sportsmen and women look at uh, these kind of occasions and talk talk about how much they learnt, how many mistakes they made, yeah, how many times they were able to correct that. That's what the best players do, I'm sure. SJ's been through that herself in the early days. It's made her the player that she is. Yeah, hundred percent. It's kind of how you respond to to these situations, what you take away from it, and and what you do between now and, and the next time you're in this situation.
course, for Perry. She is just focused on the next round. Obviously, she's won this event before, but she, she knows how to win big events. She won't be looking too far ahead. She'll just be happy to shake hands here. Slightly delayed, though, with that error on the backhand side. Did you have a set routine um, between rounds when you were playing in terms of your what you do after a match? And yeah, yeah. but it was different um, depending on whether I won or lost. <laughs> 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 I, can, I can imagine that, yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, not always, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I think it depends on... I mean, if you've had a, an easy first round, which is you know, which is what this is looking like, um, then you could probably do a little bit more in between in terms yep. of your practice and your what you do in between. Sometimes you get one day off, sometimes you get two, uh, depending on the event. But uh, with five setters, obviously, it's a whole whole different ball game. There's a lot of icing going on. Yeah. A lot of pain in between the rounds. Not never mind on the court. Yeah. Uh, but it's stuff that you have to go through in order to win an event. Yeah, I think it's interesting. Obviously, we talked earlier about uh, Nick Matthew working with Declan James now. And uh, I think Nick Nick's one of the, those people in terms of his um, his routines in between matches. It was very sort of meticulous. And like you say, almost did, did more work in between, in between the matches in terms of the physio, the recovery, the icing eating the right food, stretching, all of that um, was just as much work as he, he was putting in for the actual match, you know. Yeah, well, I've, yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean he's, he's a real student of the game, but uh, Sarah Jane Perry is a student of the game also, and uh, she's a former champion. She's beaten her young op opponent. She's given her the respect that she deserves, and I think that's good. You don't want to panda to them you want to play the best you can and she comes through 11-4 11-3 11-3 in just 20 minutes Sarah Jane Perry through to round two
Ladies and gentlemen, for our final match of this afternoon's session, please welcome onto court from England, Charlie Lee and his opponent and defending champion, seeded two for this year's AJ Bell British National Championship. against Alice Green. That should be interesting to uh, up-and-coming young English girls. And then the Scotsman, the Flying Scotsman, Alan Klein against Nick Wall, Alison Waters versus Lily Taylor. And then finally, the number one seed from Wales, Joel Makin, taking on the young pretender, Sam Todd. Well, I'm Simon Park, and joining me once again this year in the commentary box is Connor Sheen. Good afternoon, Connor. Afternoon, Parky. Good to be back. Great to have you back. You were just, uh, I saw you in the crowd earlier watching your uh, your pal, Pat Rooney. Yeah. How do you think he did? I thought he was I thought he was really unlucky, actually. I think the first game, first game he had chances, obviously having game balls um, from not really a winning position. I think he was like 8-3, eight 8-3 three, eight three down and then managed to go up to 10-8. Um, kind of shows what Patrick's about, really. Kind of like a bit of a patchy performance for him, but 
I think that first kind of settled deck as well. I think if Patrick would have got that first, then he'd have felt a bit more, bit more tense. But as it was, kind of just showed his class at the end, didn't he? Yeah, it was a big relief for Deck. I think winning that first because he knew that. Um, I mean, Rooney was a it was a difficult draw for him, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, really. It's a, he's a difficult draw for for most people these days. Patrick Rooney. Yeah, he's definitely a test for for anyone. When he's playing well, he's have a, he's had some really good results against top top thirty players. I've seen him. We play for the same um, German league team, and I saw him beat Omar Mossad. Um, it's in a great a, in a win. Match that's probably his best win, isn't it? I think yeah, so far. Yeah. And this is a similar sort of thing. Be- beating Daryl Selby yeah. in uh, Tring. And he's pushed all the top players, pushed James Wallstrop before. And this is a similar sort of matchup, really. Um, Charlie Lee, perhaps not quite at Pat Rooney's level at the moment because he's been coming back um, from an illness, which you'll talk about in a second. But he's got uh, the defending champion and and obviously needs no introduction. James Wallstrop has been a former world number one. But Charlie Lee can play, can't he? Certainly can, yeah. He's. Um, I think when he was... You know, when he was injury and illness free, maybe two years ago, he was um, he was in the top top hundred in the world. He's won a PSA title as well, um, and he was kind of the next one just behind Patrick. I think they were around the same level. I think Charlie might have beaten him as well once, once or twice. Um, so England squash are definitely looking at him and and Patrick in the same kind of same kind of group to kind of push the likes of George and and Richie and people like that. But unfortunately, um, had that chronic fatigue syndrome, and but it's just great to see him back, back playing. Absolutely, absolutely. He's, uh, I know both him and his brother, uh, and his and their father, are so passionate about squash. Commentated uh, many times at St George's, where they're a big part. Great start. Yeah, he'll just be looking to to play well here, Charlie. There's obviously no pressure on him playing like someone at the calibre of Willstrop. He's just going to try and play his best, do himself justice and just take it step by step. What do you say his best ap- attributes are? He's quite, him and his brother are quite quite different in style, aren't they? Yeah, they, he's clever. He knows he knows what he's doing. He can work the ball around really well. Um, I think he's... I think his brother's a bit, I'd say, a bit more attritional than, than Charlie, but I think Charlie's got got more quality going in short, I'd say. Maybe he'll become more attritional um, as he gets older, but he's, he's definitely got the game to to kind of push Will's drop up the court if he gets a chance. Yeah. Can't leave him there. And that's the one of the hardest things I've... I've played uh, Will's drop a few years back. It was 11 years between us, but it's, it's I know the feeling when you're on court with him. It's it's very hard to actually put work into his legs because he's, he's such a controller. He's so accurate, the marksman. And I know a child is an accurate player himself, but he um, just reads the game so well, doesn't he, Will's Yeah, drop? I, I've been on, been on court with him a few times as well. Um, and you just... You, you think you've hit a decent shot to the back and then you get yourself on the tee but you don't feel as comfortable because you, you can still play five different shots from, from the back corner which are not many people can do so you never really feel comfortable at yeah, any point. He's got, he's got so many options. Yeah, it was just wonderful to see him win for the second time this national championships last year, eleven years between the first and second Was cycle, yeah. Eleven years. Well it's Nick Matthew, isn't it? Yeah. yeah and Dara Selva got one as well. Yeah. But Pete Barker's livid. Was he <laughs> number like five in the world at one point? There was Lee Beachel as well, I think, yeah. in there. Um towards the end of Lee Beachel's run. Pete Barker must have made the semis for eleven years. I think I think you're right. Pretty much. Ten t- for a decade of yeah. semi finals. <laughs> yeah. Not winning one. That was as rare as hen's teeth from James Wallstrop. A flick into the tin. Um, that was down. Yeah, he's just checking that. Uh, I think he took his eye off it, but I think he'll know from the contact that it was down. That was. Now you watch here. There's just a bit of a flick of the wrist, and it's straight in the tin. Oh yeah, that's down. <laughs> Thanks for clarifying yeah. that. Well, the ref didn't know. <laughs> oh, did Wallstrop? Did you think 
think Lee's capable of, of doing anything here, taking a game maybe, snatching a game. Um, I think a game might be optimistic. Um, you just don't know with, with Charlie because he's, uh, he's already had three matches, obviously beating um, a good win yesterday, last night against Josh Masters in the qualifying finals. Obviously, Josh coming back from hip surgery himself, so you had two guys who were coming back into like tournament play, um, not at, at their best. But you know, you just wonder how m how much that's took out of of Charlie. Doesn't seem like it's took too much out of him so far. Hope it's not. Well, he's had that horrible illness that you mentioned that. Uh Afflicted Peter Marshall so badly, uh, you know, I'm, I'm assuming it's from overtraining. So it's something that you, I mean, it's not always the case, but in Peter Marshall's case, it was. And it's uh, saddening, really, isn't it? Because it's a sport yeah. you love and you and it's so brutal, and you put everything into it to, to follow your dreams, and then yeah. you're knocked out by, by this. It kind of makes it worse because I think. You know, you mentioned his, his dad and his brother are also involved in squash, and it's like it's the whole whole family, isn't it? And then they're always his dad's always doing stuff at the, the St George's his club, and there's like and his, his girlfriend Jazz is obviously playing. Of course, um, yeah, she was, so she's on later today. Yeah, so she's always you know you can't really get away from squash and be <laughs> or watching all the time. Family. No, <laughs> and if you're not playing when you were top hundred in the world and just about to kind of attack the top. Top 70, top 80. It's difficult, isn't it? Can't imagine he's he's had a good time of it over the past like year. I think he's been out for about 16 months, something like that. Not really. Yeah, that's horrible. I've actually had the distinction of playing in serious matches against father and son in that family. I played not against Charlie, but I played. Danny Lee in about 1904, <laughs> uh, the father, <laughs> <laughs> and then Joe Lee, Charlie's older brother, I think um, probably 10 or 15 years ago, 10 years ago maybe. Two wins? was actually. Yeah. It was. Yes, <laughs> Wasn't expected to beat, uh, to beat Danny though. Oh, that's nice. At the time. That's a beautiful flick. Classic Holden flick. Yeah. Classic Will Strop. There it is. <laughs> it's a good song, that. It's a great shot from Willstrop again. Flashing that ball across the top of the tin. Well, he makes it look easy, doesn't he? It's just winners come for fun. And six game balls now for the marksman. The defending champion here in Nottingham. Nice no lat to finish. <laughs> nice no lat. Not for Charlie Lee, but for Wilstrup, yes. Just what the doctor ordered for the tall Yorkshireman. Taking the first game, 11-4 in seven minutes. Wilstrup leads by one game to love. Yeah, pretty comfortable first game for Wilstrup. Charlie not really finding his, his length on this court. He hasn't played on the glass court as yet. Um, so that was a bit of a learning curve. Hopefully he'll come back a little bit more competitive in, in the second, but at the minute it's all will stop moving Charlie around the court. It's him who leads one game to love.
Full stop, please. One game to love. Love all. I think we need to get this um, out of the way, Connor. You did actually play in this tournament. I want to know <laughs> how you got on. Um, yeah, I did. Played uh, one Tuesday, uh, and then I lost to James Peach. You'll you'll know. I do Peachy. know. Yeah. Um, play okay or not? Not a good performance. Um, I, pl I played all right, but thing is with with Peachy, just no one ever sees him, so you don't know how. Because <laughs> he, he's a in Bristol Ever. University, no one sees him. I've so seen many. Just stay, he's just he, like a hermit. Yeah, he's, he stays uh, in the wilderness. <laughs> <laughs> no one sees him play. No one really knows how he's playing. But he's all the way through juniors. He's quality. Oh, he's quite a he, player. He was up there, but then kind of didn't play as much as he went to university. Didn't choose the the professional route. Um, but when he's playing well, he's he's so difficult. He lost out to Ollie Pet last night. Who plays Daryl um, at the park in the first round? But be interesting match. Yeah, he That's looked good actually. Oli Pet. Yeah, he looked good I last mean night. He used to be. I uh, haven't seen him in a long time, but he used to be exceptional player. Mm. Talking of exceptional, what a, what a winner that was! It was Wilstrop light from from Lee. At this start, will just settle Charlie in the second. Not really featuring too much in the first game. But if he can just find his length at the start, he can try and move James around because that's, that's the way, isn't it, to, to kind of play him at, at pace and move him. Yeah, I think he needs to try and extend the rallies. Not not per se, not all the time, just just for, for a while, like you say, to try and get into the match. He, you know, he has got some skill of his own, as we've just seen, but I think... Um, I think just to try and extend the rallies at least into double figures more often than not in terms of shots. But then you can actually start working the physique of, of Wilstrop a little yeah. bit. How long is it from TOC? That would have been the last time he played competitively wouldn't it? Uh, I think it's a is it around three weeks? Yeah. Around that. He was playing well there. Lost out to Joel, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, it was a good performance. Yeah, that was a great game. Mm. Obviously C did to meet in this year this year's final. Yeah, pretty much the uh two two best players in the in the UK at the moment. Yep. It's a good little insight into into this event. Wilstrop will be hoping that uh, Sam Todd can do some damage later this evening. Yeah, he's looking good as well, cool. Toddy. Yeah, he beat uh, he beat Owen Taylor, didn't he? In the he beat Owen qualifying. And yeah, he beat Owen and then beat Simon Herbert. Simon Herbert. Yep. Two two good wins. It's almost as big as Will Stop. <laughs> it's good stuff from Charlie. He's just capitalised on a few opportunities at the start of this second yeah and in, gen in general the, the rallies are slightly longer aren't they there's, there's less errors oh, oh it's unlucky unlucky he did that earlier oh it was up yeah I thought it was good ah, my eyes are going put those glasses on though. <laughs> stand corrected yeah he did that shot earlier it's um, almost impossible to read Starting to get a little bit hotter in here since you arrived, Connor. I'm not sure what it is. Happens quite a lot, that. Maybe the uh, 
cologne you're wearing. I like it. <laughs> it's Victor and Rolf. <laughs> That's the brand. Other thanks. Other colognes that are available. What's that, Midi? Uh, the brand. It's tight work from Lee again. He needs to keep it out that middle, doesn't he? Yeah. He's got to find his corners, even if it's just lifting it. I think, slow um, it down. yeah, absolutely. And um, over exaggerated width if he's going to go that way. Anything loose, particularly on this backhand side, he's, he's struggling. He's done it's well, better, though, yeah. to, to recover from that sticky situation. Oh, that's nice. It's great. That's it's just, nice. just in a fold, wasn't it? Anything slightly loose, and, and Wilstrop either he either volleys it like he did on the backhand, or oh. he just takes his time and holds it. It's absolute perfection. Wait a shot as well, though, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, that is oh, great. It's a joke. He's got it though. Unbelievable stuff. <coughs> Strong volley there from Lee. Just makes you go forward, doesn't he, Wells Drop? Yeah. You have to cover yeah. the front corners because he's so good there. And then he's got that option of holding in and flicking long. And whatever he does is <laughs> his quality. It's brutal, isn't it? Like you, you've got to get the other side of him. Yeah, you have to, you have to commit, don't you? Because if you if you don't push up, then you're not constantly telling yourself to push up. You're just not getting you're not getting the short ball. And then when you do start to push up, he sends it deep. Just the different patterns of play that he's got are so damaging. Yeah, he's one of a kind, is James Wallstrap. I, I can't see there being, once he's retired, another player like him, especially in this modern game. I mean, you, you've got, obviously, very skillful players like Gawad around on the circuit. But uh, That's he's a different type, isn't it? He is. He's a different type of player. And he he just, I think he slows it down and varies it a lot more than anyone anyone else. It's a pace control, isn't it? Yeah. And, and, I, and I, he controls it so well and... It'd be sad to when he's when he's gone. It won't be. Uh, he's just a unique player, James Wilstrom. Trying to think who the next best kind of player is at at taking people's movement away from them. Like he's played Paul Cole a few times on well on, on glass courts. Most is where he's most effective against him. Like Commonwealth Games and he played him in um, TOC a couple of years ago. Well, when he plays well, yeah, I mean, against somebody like that, then he really, <laughs> he, c he can really uh, embarrass people at times. But um, I think it's probably Gawad in terms of the change in the pace and mixing it up. And Diego? Yeah, that's, Diego a, good, does that's it well. a good call. It's a good call, especially someone so, so young as well. He could be taking the baton, as it were. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> Just awareness, isn't it, and the and the calmness to be able to just keep redropping. So three game balls for Will Strop to take a two love lead. Plays that shot well, Charlie Lee, high up on the backhand. Oh, well played, nice. Charlie Lee. It's good. It's good holding. He's matching Wilstrop in at times. Yeah, he's not afraid to take him in, is he? Certainly not. I mean, the first straight drive on the backhand was pretty good, but Wilstrop read it. So, what was the difference between that one and the one at the end of the first? Uh, not one a lot. 
Connor. Talking about Not minimal interference. Just saying. <laughs> Yeah, just a slightly loose error there. He's, he's still got the attacking mindset, which he's got to have. Just a little help there from David Campion getting out of the court. So James Wollstrop takes the second game, 11-8 in 11 minutes. He leads by two games to love. Yeah, it's better stuff from Charlie in the second game. Managed to elongate the rallies a little bit better. Had Will Strop working into the front two corners. Went six two up, I think, in the second. But you know, you're not national champion for for nothing. And James just showing his class, picking Charlie off. Really, I think Charlie just needs to try and get back on the front foot and try and minimise James' opportunities and see what he can do in the third game. See Charlie Lee's got the uh, quite a lot of support from the youngsters in the circuit, Lewis Anderson, Nick Wall, you see that? Lucy Tamel, Josh Owen. The whole squad. And Jazz Hutton is uh, and the his misses. girlfriend, should be playing later on. The misses. <laughs> be up against Alice Green at five o'clock on this court. Just have got an interesting result coming through from the park, Nottingham Squash Club, George Parker taking out uh, the 5-8 to eight seed from Scotland, Greg Lobben. 11-8 in the fifth in 58 minutes, so that's a bit of an upset. Yeah, it's a surprising one, though, isn't it? That George hasn't hasn't started well this season. Um, and Greg, obviously, beating, beating Paul in, Paul Collin in Edinburgh and then beating Darrell, losing out to Gawad in the final, but he would have been coming in quite confident to this event. I know that it means quite a lot to him as well, the Nationals. Perhaps the I mean I know it's only I know it was two weeks ago, but perhaps those efforts kind of emotionally taken a lot out of him. Yeah, you know, doing so well in in his home country as well. So the worst kind of start really for for Lee here. We'll stop motoring on. Loves that fate, doesn't he? he does. Loves it. Well, he's just got so much confidence. Do you see where that ball landed? The second bounce, perfectly in the back wall, Nick. I mean, you you mentioned weight of stroke earlier. There's no one better than Will Stroke no. when he's playing well. And he looks in fine form, the defending champion. And this is a lot like how he was last year on this court. He really was able to control people and s step forward. she be quite a bit more aggressive than he can be sometimes against the world's top players. He's got a good record on this court, hasn't he? And he beat Galtier in the European individuals a couple of years ago. Good point, three, yeah. 3-2. Three, good memory. This is why this is why you're here, Connor. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and then obviously winning last year. I'm not sure if he's played PSL on this. 
I'm sure he will have. Could be undefeated on this court. I'll have to check that out. Obviously got his his father, Malcolm, in his corner. Had to help him with the vending machine. <laughs> just before before they went on yeah, trying Malcolm. to yeah, trying <laughs> to get a bottle of water for James. Couldn't figure out where the uh it's one of those vending machines where you could use card and it was completely lost on him. That would have been quite comical. Did you film it? No, I didn't film it. Did get him a bottle of water though. <laughs> it was one pound fifty. <laughs> Never see that again. <laughs> Very rare, that error from Will Strop. Just clipping the top of the tin. Another thing about Will Strop is, uh, much like Federer in tennis, you very, very rarely see him off balance. E even when he's making a mistake, he looks majestic. A majestic mistake. Wish <laughs> <laughs> I could say that about myself. You never... He never often plays a long shot, does he? Every shot kind of looks, seems to be the right shot. Yeah. And he just plays it different ways, whether he puts hold on it or gets on it early. I think everything he does, um, it's much the same as Nick Matthew did, in a but in a very different way, in a different style. Oh, and that is playing with purpose. Yeah. Every, th every shot is played with purpose. There's hardly any wasted shots. You know, unless you're under immense amounts of pressure, you're not going to waste that shot. Yeah, that's something I know that they drilled into you at Pontefract. Every shot has, has a purpose. Play it to the best of your ability each shot at a time. Good squeeze. Plays that shot so well, yep. Will Strop. It's um, so difficult to read when he's coming in at that uh, sort of fairly straight, almost down the channel. But six match balls now, and there's the reach from Will Strop as well. He's got everything. He's got speed, skill, focus, experience. Oh, it's a nice ball. Just one match ball save there for Lee. Beautiful touch. And that's it, the defending champion, very, very clinical, impressive performance from the Yorkshireman. Taking out Charlie Lee, who played pretty well. He's got to be proud of himself there. He's playing against the marksman, who comes through 11-4, 11-8, 11-5, 3-love in 27 minutes. Yeah, he can't be too hard on himself, Charlie, you know, after everything that he's kind of come through over the past year, just getting himself to the main draw of the, the Nationals this year. Obviously, a smaller draw, 16 draw, um, is a great achievement in, in itself, and he sh should be pleased with that. Couldn't really do much today against the, an inform number two seed, James Willstrop. And it's Willstrop who moves forward to the quarterfinals in this AJ Bell National Championships. Three love. So there we have the results. Cortese threw in four. James threw in three. Sarah Jane Perry, a comfortable three love. Will Strop, very impressive against Charlie Lee, coming through in three. We have a little break now until five o'clock where Jasmine Hutton will take on Alice Green. Alan Klein against Nick Wall. Alison Waters against Lily Taylor. And then the final match, the number one seed from Wales, Joel Makin against the young pretender Sam Todd from Yorkshire. So join us again at 5pm. <laughs>